Today, I'm going to get into the science of fatigue. You'll learn why a certain amount of fatigue is actually important as a runner, how to use fatigue to your advantage, and how to know how much is too much fatigue. Unless you only do a couple of short, easy runs a week, you are going to feel fatigue at some point as an athlete. Our bodies simply do not immediately repair from the beneficial damage that we do to them in our workouts. When we exercise, our muscle fibers sustain tiny micro tears that are repaired and rebuilt during the recovery process. Those repaired muscles end up being faster and stronger than they were before, but that process can take days or even weeks depending on what you did to them. In an attempt to keep you on the couch to repair and avoid more damage, the brain will send Send pain signals to your muscles and will create a mental sensation of exhaustion or fatigue. Your brain's main job is to keep you alive, and if that means slowing you down mentally and physically, it'll do it. But if we waited the days or weeks necessary to be 100% recovered from a single run, well, we wouldn't get very far in our training. One way to think about fatigue is that it's kind of like running with a weighted backpack. Every run you do puts another weight in your pack. Each recovery day takes some weight out, but it doesn't completely empty. As we train, we get used to running with a weighted pack, so much so that we might not even notice that it's there after a while, but it's always there. The goal is to get so accustomed to the weighted training that when we finally set the bag down on race day, running feels as light and easy as possible. During training, we need to find that balance between recovery and fatigue so that our load doesn't ever get so heavy that we can't lift it. The first step is to alternate your hard days and easier days. This is the main reason behind the phrase, hard days hard, easy days easy. The goal is to concentrate your most fatigue producing efforts together so that you're not in a constant state of muscle breakdown and fatigue. Your slow, easy mileage is the best way to build aerobic endurance, which is why endurance runners should spend about 80% of their runs at a conversational pace. We even call some of this easy running a recovery run when it's scheduled the day after a speed workout out or a long run. Your backpack is going to feel extra heavy and even an easy run is going to be a struggle to run with good form. Not only is this run going to feel terrible, but you're more likely to reinforce bad running habits if you're too sore and tired to run well. On the other hand, if you actually are feeling light and fresh as a daisy after a big speed workout, you might be ready to bump up your training intensity or your volume if you're trying to reach your potential. A lack of fatigue isn't a perfect sign of this as some people are more fatigue resistant than others, but it can be a clue. Now, I'd like to go over some ways you can actually use fatigue strategically in your training. Most of the time, we are trying to recover and get rid of the fatigue of training, but sometimes you can actually harness that fatigue to your advantage. A great way to do this is by running a shorter steady or about marathon paced run the day before the long run. Now, at the beginning of this episode, I told you to alternate your hard days with easy days, but this is when you wanna do the opposite for a specific purpose. Instead of thinking of the steady before the long run as two separate runs, think of them as one run broken up by a night of rest. So perhaps your steady run is six or eight miles on a Saturday. It's not an easy run other than the warm up and the cool down miles, but it's not a super challenging run either. Then on Sunday, you'll be effectively beginning your long run at mile six or mile eight instead of mile zero, since you're still carrying Saturday's miles in your legs. If your long run is 18 miles on Sunday, you're effectively running 22 or 24 miles, but with far less risk or recovery time. But it's not just in marathon training that you can use this technique. In 5k training, you can combine hill sprints in the same week as a track session. Or you might try a tempo run followed by some quick 400 meter repeats for a half marathoner. By starting a workout fatigued, you can automatically intensify the workout, allowing you to run less with the same effect. Of course, anytime you intensify a workout, you need to be smart about it. You can't just keep adding weights to your backpack and expect to get stronger and stronger. Specific accumulated fatigue workouts are very challenging and should only be done every other week during the race specific portion of your training schedule. This ensures that you don't overdo it and find yourself on the wrong side of fatigue. Chronic fatigue is one of the first signs of overtraining syndrome, which can be a tough hole to climb out of. Overtraining 
is not always about simply training too much and it includes everything else you've got going on in your life that contributes to your overall stress levels. If you're not quite feeling recovered after a few days of rest, that should start to get your attention. And you might consider keeping things easy for a while before adding more stress from speed or long runs. A very common culprit of fatigue in runners is low iron levels. Slight fatigue and shortness of breath happen to everyone after a hard workout, so low iron levels can be missed without a blood test. I recommend that all runners get a simple blood test to check their iron levels levels because you don't want to supplement with iron if you're not deficient. Supplementing with iron can be toxic for some people, so you need to make sure you need it before you take it. Ask your doctor to test for hemoglobin, hematocrit, iron, total iron binding capacity, and ferritin. If you can't remember all of that, just explain to your doctor that you're a runner and you want a full anemia panel with ferritin because it's not always included in a standard blood panel. There are many other medical reasons for excessive fatigue, such as illness or other deficiencies in your diet. So check with your doctor if you're not feeling better in a couple weeks. And finally, I'd like to talk about the kind of fatigue that you feel while you're actually running. In long runs and races, you'll eventually start to fatigue if you go long enough. If you're running longer than 90 minutes and you haven't eaten anything, your brain will start to slow your legs down. This is the most common reason for the marathon bunk. Your glycogen stores are getting depleted and your brain sends out the mental and physical fatigue signals. This can be largely prevented or at least pushed back by properly fueling during the run. The next reason you'll feel fatigued is if your legs aren't up to the task you're trying to do. Try running two or three times as long as you've ever run before on untrained legs and see what happens. You'll feel tired, both mentally and physically. And it's not just running longer that will trigger the fatigue signals. If you're attempting a speed workout that is beyond what you've trained for, your brain immediately imagines that you're being chased by a saber-toothed tiger. Stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol shoot through your system and it won't take you long to be bent over with your hands on your knees, completely exhausted. Heat, hills, cold, and dehydration all exacerbate these effects, making you feel even worse, even faster. The good news is that your body has an incredible ability to adapt to fatigue producing stimuli. With gradual, patient, and smart training, you can teach your brain and your body to run faster and longer while increasing your fatigue resistance. And then you can use Use your fatigue in clever ways to maximize your workouts, making them more effective and easier to recover from. Then on race day, you'll finally get to set down that heavy pack of fatigue so you can be faster than ever. Don't get too comfortable. Your fatigue will be waiting for you at the finish line.